Hi designers, it's Haley with Silver Moon Design School and today I'm going to show you how to create a glass apothecary or like a tiny little jar for incense or oils, like a diffuser type jar and it's going to be a quick and easy one today, it shouldn't take hardly any time at all. We'll start in Adobe Illustrator where I'll show you how to create those 3D objects and we'll export those into Adobe Dimension, assemble them, and create a really nice rendering. These are so easy to make. Once you get the hang of it, you'll feel like you can create anything and it'll look really stunning in your portfolio. So let's go. First I have Adobe Illustrator open with a new document. I have two layers open, one called reference where I've placed my reference image, which you see here and another layer called art, which is where I'm gonna be working. Reference is locked so I don't accidentally move anything. So I'm gonna start with my rectangle tool and I'm going to draw around the base of this jar. I will flip the outline so I can see the inside, but my goal here is to just get a center point. So I'm turning on my rulers and I'm going to drag a guide to the center of this rectangle. Now what I can do is I can keep this rectangle, I don't have to delete it, and I will use my scissors tool to just snip at the center point of that line and delete the left side of that rectangle. Um, I don't need it, I'm just creating one half of the shape so that when I go to revolve it using 3D tools, it creates what I need. So now I'll just be tweaking this rectangle to fit the shape that I need. I do want the bottom of this apothecary jar to be flat, which is why I'm not tracing it exactly. I want a flat edge at the bottom. But what I could do if I wanted it to look a little fancier is bring this center bottom point up and use anchor points to kind of guide it along this edge. So I'm gonna curve this one in and it's kind of an interesting shape here. So what I'll do is just start moving around anchor points. This is going to need a curve. And then I will grab my pen tool and draw. Again, I'm not curving with this shape exactly. I wanna imagine that it's not tilted at an angle. Like it's really truly flat and, and head on. It's nice when you can find those images, but they're not always available just because of Product photography. They're not as interesting when it's just a flat straight on image. It's more interesting like above or below. So you do have to just imagine what your shape looks like straight on sometimes. And I will curve these in just a little bit. And same with this. I don't want it to be sharp edges. I want it to be kind of cool like it's all molded in one piece because it is. Okay and then the other part I'll need to do is create the inside line. So what I'm gonna do is make a copy of this line just by going Option, Nudge. I'm going to select this, go to Object and Path and Offset Path. So this is another way, it's a little different than how I normally do it, but this is another way to offset and create the path that you need, the inside line. So I will create that at like 0.05 inches, perfect. And using my scissors tool, I'm gonna to snip away the parts that I don't need. So I won't need that inside part and I won't need anything other than that part. I'm gonna delete this outside line because we don't need that either. And then adjust these inside lines until it meets. Deleting that there. And I do think that this is maybe a little bit thicker than the rest of the glass. So I will make that thicker and then I also want to move this line at the bottom to connect with that anchor point and I think I want to make the base of this thicker too so I'm going to select these three or four points at the bottom and move them up so that it has a sturdier base because I'm imagining liquids and diffuser oils in this and you don't want it to tip over you definitely want to keep the liquid inside so a heavier base will do that. And then I can also take this smooth tool under the brush menu and draw over, trace over this line to smooth that out a bit or to add a little bit of like a hand blown glass type look. It makes it look a little more like authentic and handmade. Okay, and now I'm taking both of these points and I'm hitting Command J to join them into one shape. 
And I want to take this point now that they're joined and I want to curve that in because it looks like it's a pretty drastic curve the way that it slopes inward like this. So I'm going to drag these and create that slope. Next, what I want to do is create the stick or the straw. So I'm going to grab my circle tool and draw a line as such. Now we can jump over to our 3D materials tools and I click on this panel and click extrude. And there we go. Now I can just slide this depth um, toggle until it makes the length of straw that I need. And I can also change this in dimension, but it's sometimes helpful to hold it right next to the reference image and see what we're working with. So it's already pretty good. I'm gonna take it just a little bit further. Maybe 8.5 was the better option there. Wonderful, 8.5 is great. And then I'll also flip this from outline to solid fill and just pick an amber hue here. We're gonna change this in dimension just because of the lighting and the materials, but I like to choose something kind of close to the reference. And this I will choose revolve. And you can see, that's it. <laughs> now we need to export these, which is really simple in Adobe Illustrator 2023. You scroll down to the bottom of the 3D and materials panel and click on export 3D object. And you wanna click on these individually and select them, send them to this asset export panel. So this is the jar and this is the straw. Select both of them so they're highlighted and make sure that OBJ is the file type that is selected, then click export. Now open up Adobe Dimension and click new and this is what you'll get. I always go to the top and click 100% zoom to show that the default is very small. So what I do is I increase the size because I want a nice crispy render. I want like beautiful pixels. I want it to be able to be used on my website. You know, it's not gonna fit on a billboard, but we're not doing that right now. And even if you did want a billboard sized rendering, you very well could do that just by making this canvas larger and increasing the resolution. But I'm very happy with the balance of high resolution and my time to render. Normally these take like maybe 10 minutes to render and I'm happy with that. Um, again, the higher the resolution and the larger the canvas size, the longer it'll take to render. So just keep that in mind. Now I will drag in my jar. You can see that it's brought the color with it. Love that. And I will also bring in the straw. And now I'm just gonna kind of place them where I want them to go. Um, here we go. I think it would be helpful if I added the materials at this point. So what I'll do is scroll down in my standard materials and I'm going to choose glass. Let's see if glass has the objects that we need. So now that I'm in group number zero, let me rename that jar. I rename this straw. Now that we have jar, and we know what it is that we're clicking on. We'll have to go back to our Illustrator file and grab our hex value. Sometimes it remembers it in that panel and sometimes it doesn't. I haven't quite figured out why. So once we paste in our hex value, there we have our glass. But our reference image is frosted. It's not completely see-through. So I will grab roughness and I'll drag it to 50% just to see what we're working with, if that gets us close and it is very, very dark compared to our reference image, which means I can play with the color here. I can drag along this axis to try to match that color. And this will change too, depending on the lighting, depending on the background, if you're choosing a dark background versus a light one, but we're getting there, we're getting closer. I think I might move it a little less saturated into the gray. I think I was better off with it a little bit brighter. Nice, I like that. Okay, we'll roll with that color. And then I'll need to apply, let's go with matte for the straw. I'll come to the panel here and I'm able to change the color. I like the dark, just like the reference material. Let me turn off that render preview because it is really slowing down my computer. Straw, we'll go to matte. 
I will choose a dark gray. And now that we have the straw styled the way that we want it, we can just duplicate it by uh, clicking Command D or Control D in your shortcuts. And this is where we can start to adjust these. And once you have a copy, you can start tilting them different ways so that they look like they're resting on your glass. And I want to be careful that it doesn't go through the glass like my first straw there. So if I come to the top, it might help me a little bit be able to determine this. Um, I can also select two straws and do the same thing. Hit Command D and it will duplicate both straws. That way I can save a little time, save a little energy by not having to create each one by one. All right, let's see what we've got now. Very, very good. Very cute. I really like how those are sitting. I could um, tweak those and keep playing with the placement, but I think I'm, I'm pretty happy with that. Let's look at the render preview. Gorgeous. And now we can play with the lighting. Um, we can tweak it, but that's pretty much it, guys. All right, designers, that was it. That's how to create a glass apothecary diffuser bottle using Adobe Illustrator in Adobe Dimension. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe. If you have any questions or would like to see a specific video or specific object made, please let me know in the comments. So um, until next time.